assalamu alaikum everyone today we are going to conduct the seven lecture of our uh, this course and today's topic is status register so let's proceed to the topic okay the topic of today's lecture is status register and status register is also known as flat register it is a 16 bit register which uh, which uh, which have individual bits which are known as flags and these flags are actually responsible to state the current uh, position or current environment of a microprocessor uh, by reporting several events going on as a result of instruction execution so these flags are also known as conditional flags in 8086 or 8088 microprocessor. Uh, whenever we say words flags, so flag refers to these uh, individual bits. Like we can see, this is a 16 bit register. Uh, this number one flag, which is CF, second flag, PF, AF, and so on. So these individual bits are known as flags. And these are also uh, translator of current state of microprocessor. So whatever their state, uh, I mean, of course, it is a bit, so they can be either one or zero. So whatever their state is, uh, it has certain meaning. And those meanings are very important for from the programming point of view, which is our major goal. And this flag register is common in all 8086 system base for example if it is it is called simple flag register uh, or it is uh, in simple 16 bit microprocessor if we talk about 32 bit microprocessor they are called extended register and so on they are also present in uh, 64 bit microprocessor so these registers are uh, you can say a classical and traditional uh, register which is present in every microprocessor uh, okay, so we can see that uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So there are 9 flags, but out of those 9 flags, uh, these 6 flags are known as status flags because they are actually translator of certain conditions as I told you earlier. So these 6 bits provide information about current situation of microprocessor while 3 flags, these 3 flags, IF, TF and TF these three flags are called control flags they actually put microprocessor in certain state or certain condition where microprocessor performs uh, other than than its normal routine so the, that's why these flags are known as control flags and they can be controlled or programmed by programmer uh, rest of these bits seven bits of course nine nine bits are known as individual bits uh, individual flags but while seven out of these uh, 16 bits are not implemented so they are just remain as empty places or bracket okay in this slide we are going to discuss about the very first bit of status register and that is carry flag so it is equals to one when there is a carry out from the most significant bit of the result and otherwise it remains zero and this particular definition is valid for addition operation uh, we will deal with uh, another operation uh, or another report which is reported by carry flag uh, during the subtraction operation in the next slide so this in this slide we are just focusing on addition operation so before i go and uh, explain this example i want to just highlight the keyword which is most significant bit and it is of course coming from the result or one can say the very recent result and what we are observing the carry out right carry out so if there is any carry out uh, from the most significant bit of what of the recent result so if this event is going to occur in the microprocessors or uh, last execution uh, then this carry flag will become equals to 1 and if there is no carry out so it will remain 0 or its status will uh, basically not change so uh, we have two 
16 bit numbers here uh, as you can say the number ranges from D0 to T15 the first row indicate a 16 bit binary number and the second row indicate another 16 bit binary number and we are going to add them so 01 becomes 1 00 becomes 0 1 1 it will become in binary equals to 1 0 so 0 will come here and 1 will go to carry okay so 1 0 so, let me show that carry here okay so that was a carry so 1 0 0 and it becomes 1 1 1 it will become again 1 0 so 0 will come here and there will be a carry so which is equals to 1 here then 101 okay i think highlighter is again missing yeah 101 0 0 0 1 0 1 0 0 1 0 1 0 1 1 0 1 0 1 1 0 1 0 1 1 0 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 0 1 and that's the point where results end do we have any extra carry coming out from this most significant bit no we don't have any carry right so the what will be the status of carry flag cf will remain equals to what zero because there is no coming no carry coming out from this most significant bit right so that is the function of carry flag and if there is a carry out let's let me change this uh, let me change the scenario let's say we have a one here one so 1 and 1 it will become what 1 0 so there will be only 0 and 1 will report outside this number right so we can see clearly there is a carry now and in this status carry flag will be equals to what 1 because there is a carry coming out from the most significant bit and that is what reported by this carry flag so i hope you have understand the concept of carry flag while we are uh, while we are discussing only addition operation okay here we are going to consider another case where carry flag becomes useful and indicates a very important uh, condition and that is in subtraction operation so whenever microprocessor is going to perform subtraction operation then uh, it will check uh, is there any kind of body by borrow in from for the most significant bit of the result uh, and if there is a borrow then carry flags uh, sets to one and if there is no borrow so carry flags remains zero so let's consider an example that's a 16 bit subtraction operation and we consider here two 16 bit number to be subtracted so in this example we see uh, there is no borrow in because uh, one can clearly observe that this first row or this first row indicate the number which is larger than the second number so smaller number is being subtracted from the larger number so there will be no need of borrow so uh, here carry flag will remain simply uh, zero so in this example carry flag will be zero but in case if there is a borrow if there is a borrow uh, for example let's say we consider this is a zero and we are going to subtract one from here so we know that uh, that thing is quite easy uh, so result will vary from these two bits uh, otherwise it was okay so uh, we have to consider a borrow in here so that zero will become one zero and one borrow will shift here so that will become simply one so one minus one will become zero and here it was one so one minus one it will become zero but what is the difference if we compare it to the last example so difference is here there is a borrow in and this borrow in must be shown somewhere in conditional flags 
so that microprocessor know knows that uh, that uh, the num subtraction was like that that smaller number was uh, being sub uh, sorry larger number was subtracted from the smaller number so there must be a borrow which is indicated in carry flag so in that case the uh, carry flag will be what it will be one i hope i have explained the thing quite uh, clearly if you have any confusion in this aspect i can just summarize it if you are going to subtract a larger number from a smaller number so carry will flag will be equals to one and if you are subtracting a smaller number from a larger number so carry flag will be equals to zero i hope uh, this point is clear okay let's discuss another important bit of the status register and that is parity uh, flag parity flag is an important flag which is useful in so many conditions while you are applying uh, for lot different algorithms for uh, different logics uh, and what is it it checks for even parity in the most recent result whatever the most recent result is in the microcontroller uh, uh, this particular uh, status flag is just going to check the most recent result that is the most highlighted thing so we have to focus on it so what it does it checks for if is there is there any kind of even parity and what is even parity I'm just going to explain uh, but before that what it performs it sets to 1 so parity flag becomes equals to 1 whenever there is a even parity right and it remains resets or it becomes 0 if there is no even parity so the rule is simple he has to look for the even parity and if he finds uh, he do this thing p is equal to 1 that means uh, sorry parity flag becomes 1 and if he doesn't find any any even parity so p will becomes simply 0 and now look look at the uh, look at the thing what is even parity even parity means the number of ones present in the result or whatever the number we are checking for even parity they should be even right so number of ones should be even we are going to take an example and odd parity if number of ones should be odd so that means uh, we have to check for the result and if the result is uh, showing number of ones to be even so that means we have an even parity if number of ones are odd in the result then we are uh, observing an odd parity so let's take an example here we are going to take the same example with as with that we took in the case of subtraction so we have to check what we have to check in the last row and we have to count the numbers uh, number of ones right so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven that means we have how many numbers uh, of ones 11 number of ones one can also do this thing in opposite fashion for example he or she can count for zeros like 1 2 3 4 and 5 so out of 16 bits we have 5 zeros so 11 will be ones. so number of ones are still odd so that means which of this condition will be true uh, this condition will become true because there was no even parity number of ones were odd so that will become what that will become simply uh, uh, odd parity so even parity is, is supposed to be reported and we are here odd parity so p will become zero okay so here we are going to discuss uh, the, another bit of this status register and that is this time we are going to discuss about auxiliary carry so what is auxiliary carry it sets to one if there is any auxiliary carry so we have to know what is an auxiliary carry and it remains zero if there is no auxiliary query carry so again uh, what it, to understand what is auxiliary carry we have to define its definition and it says it is a carry out from a d3 bit to d4 bit 
if remember if you know that we are talking about a 16 bit number so it goes from d naught to d 15 right or if we are talking about from for an 8 bit number so the bit number goes from d naught to d 7 so in which bit we are interested uh, we are interested in two bits so we are we have to look for is there any carry uh, taken from uh, d3 bit to d4 and if there is such carry that carry will known as auxiliary carry right so if there is an auxiliary carry auxiliary carry flag will become equals to 1 and if there is no auxiliary carry it becomes equals to 0 uh, furthermore if you uh, extend this knowledge so we know that uh, 4 bit of information, 4 bit of information, another 4 bit of information and another 4 bit of information. That means we are dealing with 4 hexadecimal symbols. H1, another hexadecimal symbol, H2 and then other 4 bits that means H3 and similarly we have last 4 bit of information which is H4. So uh, in that means if we are talking about d1 d2 d3 so we have to start for example let's say that is d0 then d1 will be here then d2 will be here and then d3 will be here i'm just drawing d3 uh, okay and then the next bit will be what d4 so here we comes to a fact that uh, d0 to d3 are just part of first hexadecimal symbol and d4 to d7 will be what second hexadecimal symbol so that means that's not the carry from d3 to d4 rather it is carry from first hexadecimal symbol to another hexadecimal symbol that that is what written here that is what written here in this point it is a carry out from one hexadecimal symbol to another hexadecimal symbol so auxiliary can be auxiliary carry can be defined as a uh, carry out from one hexadecimal number to another hexadecimal number uh, furthermore uh, there is another way to look at this same fact uh, let me just uh, raise this information so that i can explain okay uh, i'm going to take uh, we know that a bit is a single entity then we have 8 bit it becomes byte right similarly if we have four different bits it become one nibble right so in this point we are talking about uh, if there is a carry out from lower nibble to higher nibble that means we have four bit of information again we have four bit of information so this is what this is just a single nibble and that is another single nibble so d3 to d4 that is the carry position that is going to report by this auxiliary carry so uh, this carry is also what a uh, nibble carry that means this lower nibble is providing a carry to a higher nibble so all of these different methods but pointing towards the same thing which is known as auxiliary carry so if microprocessor finds there is an auxiliary carry in the most recent result remember the thing again same the most recent result if there is an auxiliary carry then microprocessor sets this particular flag to 1 and if there is no auxiliary carry so it remains same okay uh, and this same condition is also applicable for uh, subtraction operation and this time we are not going to check for the uh, carry rather we are going to check for the borrowing as we have explained in case of uh, carry flag so same analysis can be applied to this particular concept here well that, that's an example and in this uh, we are going to just check these two bits remember we have to look for this first nibble or first hexadecimal symbol and this second so do you see any kind of carry from here to here if for example in this addition 0 1 it becomes what 1 0 0 it becomes 0 1 1 it becomes what 1 0 so 0 is here and 1 is here still it is not carry from d3 to d4 it is just a carry from d2 to uh, okay let me use a pointer i think you cannot see this pen okay yeah uh, 
so first bit 0 1 it becomes 1 0 0 it becomes 0 1 1 it becomes 1 0 so 0 here and 1 here right and 1 0 that means simply 1 and 1 0 it becomes 1 so result is so far totally independent uh, for, for the other nibble uh, or of the other nibble so there is no carry out from this point to this point so the carry flag will be or the auxiliary carry flag which is normally known as AF so in this example it will be simply what zero because there is no auxiliary carry if you want to perform an auxiliary carry equals to one so we can change some data here let's let me change here okay that's the same thing I want to put here let's say here is a one instead of zero here is a one now I'm performing the same result okay I'm going to use the pointer again so 0 1 it becomes 1 0 0 it becomes 0 1 1 it becomes 1 0 so there will be a 0 and 1 will be carry so it becomes 1 here so 1 1 it becomes 2 2 minus 0 is equal to what once I mean 2 is also, also considered 1 0 so that will be considered as 0 and that 1 will be pushed here so we can see that is the point where microprocessor going to adapt or going to redact that okay that is there is a carry from d3 bit to d4 bit so this time this carry flag will become equals to what one so that is the concept of auxiliary flag uh, or auxiliary carry flag so if there is a carry from d3 bit to d4 bit that is the most uh, and highlight uh, way to explain this flag in simple line if there is a carry out from d3 bit to d4 bit then it is going to be reported by microprocessor by this particular flag and it becomes equals to 1 otherwise it remains 0 okay in this slide we are going to discuss about another flag bit which is 0 flag and it is very simple to understand so let me go to the point straight and it is such to one whenever the most recent result is zero so if the most recent result which is just evaluated and it is equal to zero so zero flag will become equals to what one so it is quite easy i mean and it's very interesting and very important condition uh, uh, when we will be exploring it through programming you will understand how this is very important this is something a magical flag so zero flag is quite a useful flag but and it's quite easy as well so whenever there is a result which is equals to zero so carry flag will become equals to one sorry zero flag will become equals to one okay and if the result is non zero so zf remains what equals to zero that is the logic let's take an example and in example we are shown here uh, it's just subtraction operation and we are performing uh, the same number is subtracted from the same number uh, let me show the pointer here if you see this first row and the second row number is totally same or identical so if you are going to subtraction uh, if you are going to perform the subtraction operation so you will have complete zero result that means your result is zero that means this condition this condition is going to true so zf equals to one right so zero flag will become equals to one but let's say if we have said uh, change the data and instead of uh, there is uh, for example yeah here we have a zero here just a little change and you see one minus zero it becomes also simply one so now your result is not zero if you see at the look at the whole uh, uh, result it will not be simply zero it is non-zero so which of these conditions will be true this time this second condition will become true look this condition will become true so this time zf will be zero i hope this is quite easy and you have understand it so let's discuss another bit of status register which is sign flag and it is also important register 
flag uh, or it is also important flag which is uh, used for indicating the sign of the result so it indicate the sign of recent result I mean whatever the evaluated result is uh, this flag is something which is going to enable the microprocessor to understand what is the sign of that result so if the sign of that result is uh, negative then it becomes equals to 1 so uh, as its name suggests it's, it's, it, it is indicating the only sign so if the result is negative so it becomes equals to 1 and if result is positive so it becomes equals to 0 uh, as we have earlier understand in the data types uh, whenever uh, there is a negative number in binary uh, so it's, its most significant bit will be 1 and if there is a positive number so most significant bit of that number will be 0 so similarly sign flag is just kind of copy of that so whenever the result is negative it becomes equals to 1 and whenever the result is positive it becomes equals to 0 so let's take an example here we are summing two numbers and I'm taking here only 8 bit of information just to uh, provide you enough example and for example this first number is minus 12 in decimal and its uh, equivalent in binary is shown in the first row and the second number is plus 13 so its equivalent is shown here so that will become the result will become what plus 1 and the overall result is 0 so if you see the most significant bit is also 0 here which means the result is positive so what will be the effect on sign flag so sign flag will become equals to zero here because the result is positive i hope this is very simple thing let's take an ex other example here i'm going to sum minus 12 and minus 13 okay let me highlight the point again so minus 12 and minus 13 that is the uh, binary combination for minus 12 and that is the minus uh, 13 binary combination so if you add them up it becomes equal to minus 25 and that is the minus 25 and one can clearly observe with this last word that is equal to 1 which indicates the result is negative so in this example sign flag will become equals to what 1 so I hope this thing is clear here I want to mention about uh, one important aspect if you have missed it uh, remember whenever you are considering the negative numbers you are going to uh, display the binary number in two's complement form so if any one of you is still unable to uh, understand that, that concept so please try to go through the previous lectures okay in this slide we are going to discuss another important flag of status register which is overflow flag and it sets equals to 1 whenever the sign result is out of print that is a mystery uh, or something which is to be understand and uh, it remains reset or in form of 0 whenever the result is not out of print for example for example we are uh, adding two numbers plus 1 to 7 okay let me use the pointer yeah uh, plus 1 to 7 and minus 13 if we're going to add them it becomes 1 1 14 but it should be the plus right so that is the again it's an 8 bit number and it is shown plus 1 to 7 like this minus 13 it's again two complement form so once you are gonna add them you see this last bit becomes equals to 1 0 sorry that means the result is positive and that is correct so there is no range issue here furthermore one can clearly see that these are how many seven bits will be responsible for the range and the maximum range is from minus one to eight to if you remember two plus one to seven so this number one one fourteen which is plus is quite uh, falls in this category so number is not out of the range so at this calculation the flag ov flag we are talking about overflow flag and it becomes equals to zero because there is no range issue here right but if we consider this example okay in this example we see what is going to happen we are going to subtract these two numbers look this is minus here earlier we discussed about 
addition and here we are changing it to the minus sign so we are going to subtract these numbers so if plus 1 to 7 minus minus 13 it becomes plus so 1 to 7 and 13 become plus 140 and it doesn't fall in this range so that is not and furthermore if you see the result is something vague the last bit is not supposed to be uh, it, it it was supposed to be zero since it is plus 140 but it is it is becoming one which means something is wrong here something and uh, because this result is out of range this result right so uh, this time overflow flag for this particular example will be equals to one so that is a uh, very useful flag which indicates microprocessor okay you have performed certain operation but it doesn't uh, falls under the right range so there must be some overflow and some information is misleading so that is the uh, indication uh, given by this overflow flag i hope you have understand this okay now we are moving towards some control flags so far we have discussed what are what are called status flags or which are conditions but right now we are entering towards a different zone which is control flags so these are flags uh, which are set by programmer intentionally right so the first flag which the first control flag that we are going to discuss is trap flag and it sets uh, intention it is intentionally set to one to force the microprocessor and to enter into a single step mode what is a single step mode that is basically a debugging mode what happens in that mode uh, whatever the instruction uh, is executed it uh, only once and then microprocessor checks for the, its effect what was the effect of the instruction so it's kind of a debugging mode where programmer can verify whether the instruction is working properly or the effect of instruction is going in the right direction or not so uh, what is, uh, that is the definition of single mode i've just given here in this mode microprocessor executes only single instruction and then jumps to special service routine program uh, to determine the effect of executed instruction as i explained uh, it runs only one instruction and then checks whether the effect of instruction is going in the right direction or not so how microprocessor is going to enter in that particular mode one once when we are going to set this flag trap flag equals to one so uh, user will do this thing uh, and how they will can do it they will do just set this particular flag which is tf equals to one so if tf is equals to one microprocessor is going to perform uh, all the instruction in single step mode but if tf is equals to zero then uh, uh, microprocessor runs smoothly and in the normal procedure and that's very important for debugging because uh, we can check each and every instruction and the next flag is interrupt flag this flag is used to disable or enable the maskable interrupt this is something interesting how uh, we are going to just explore a concept maskable interrupt i have already explained you guys about interrupts when we were dealing with uh, some interrupt service routines or when we were dealing with the uh, memory organization the classification of memory what kind of memory where we store different pointers for these interrupts uh, so uh, this is important concept. What is maskable interrupt? Any interrupt which can be disabled. Maskable means disabled. So, uh, but you have to enter into the interrupt mode, right? So that th this particular flag is used here. So this flag is used to disable or enable. So if you want to entertain maskable inter in uh, interrupts, you can entertain them using this interrupt flag. And if you want to disable them that okay you don't want to be bothered about uh, from these maskable interrupts so you can do it using this interrupt flag how if it is desired by programmer to deal with the maskable interrupt as i explain you if you want to do it so what you do programmer can have enable by setting it if equal to one so intentionally micro uh, microprocessors programmer going to set this interrupt flag equals to one if he is interested to deal with these maskable interrupt and if he does don't want to do these interrupt he has to just do what place zero in this if flag so if if is zero 
you won't have any kind of master villain crops and if if is equal to one then you will have uh, master villain crops okay the next thing is called directional flag and it is also one of the uh, control flag so what it does it is related to the direction of string operation how let's see if string uh, if it is equals to one so again my microprocessors programmer are going to start it and if it's start it equals to one so string or instructions automatically decreases the address whatever the address it will decrease right and string data transfer occurs from higher address to lower address this is the something unique about string operation when we are going to deal with instruction instruction uh, instruction start we are going to uh, deal with different kind of data and one of the type of data is a string data type so once a string data transfer is occurring and this direction flag df equals to one by the programmer right so what happens then uh, string operations goes in automatically uh, decrease the address right and data transfer occurs from higher address to lower address right and if it is in opposite case for example if it is zero and uh, my uh, microprocessors programmer is resets it then string operation instruction automatically increase the address and data transfer occurs from lower byte to higher uh, byte or lower address to higher address so this is something that we gonna uh, 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 explore in further detail when once we are going to deal with strong string data transfers but so far uh, we are okay to go with only a directional flag like that if df is equals to one then string tra data transfer occurs from uh, high high address to low address and if uh, df is equals to zero then data transfer occurs from uh, low address to high address okay that's it from this lecture and i hope uh, i have explained all individual bits of flag register which were important uh, if you have any queries uh, about this particular register so please note them down and we will uh, try to deal with those queries uh, in question answer session thank you so much